Jim McLean um, hooked me up with uh, David Lee from Gravity Golf, and we were talking about uh, counterbalancing. And Jim wanted me to understand this theory better so that we could um, you know, have better discussions. And basically what Mr. Lee is saying, and, and you know, I'm not putting words out of it into his mouth, but just you got your arms are pretty heavy and you got a 30 pounds of, of weight being slung right into the trajectory of the, the path of the ball. And you take any weight and, and you throw that at, at a target and um, you're going to fall forward or, and you're going to need to do something to counterbalance it on the left. Um, we'll show you impact and right there, you're going to see a bunch of funny lines there with a bunch of different degrees. It's not very straight. And you know, I'm a pretty good golfer and, uh, or was and this shot was hit fairly well. Then just using one arm, um, uh, you could see that the, um, line is much more straighter at impact. And, uh, so, you know, trying to understand this just for uh, my own game and, and also, too, the how we can use counterbalancing to uh, make more effective shots. Because it does make sense. I mean, if you throw a lot of weight towards the front of your, um, towards the ball, you know, you, you're you either going to fall forward or you're going to fall backwards. And after impact, everybody that hits the ball well is going to fall backwards towards your lead heel. But anyways, I'm not an instructor, just trying to understand how we can use pressure to determine counterbalance. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at uh, where peak velocity occurs in the golfer's swing. And on the right, um, I want to, my peak velocity with one arm is just uh, 132. And I'm going to circle that right there for you. So I've got to look and find when 132 occurs on the um, um, velocity chart and you're going to see it pretty soon next frame right there so at uh, 132 uh, these two numbers match and the uh, I'm now at peak velocity and I'm going to draw a line in my arm as well as I can and I've got about a, a, a six degree bend there. Okay, cool. And my weight distribution on my uh, heel. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. Is 56.44. So the, the body's pulling my weight to my lead uh, trail toll. But it's, you know, fairly well balanced. Okay, so... Now I'm going to go back to, uh, on the left-hand side, I'm going to, uh, again, I'm going to look for peak velocity, 166. And i got to find when peak velocity occurs on the, uh, in this side here. So I'm going to find that. And um, right there, 166. And I want to go take a look at the armband here. You know, there's a big difference. I mean, uh, you know, a little hard to explain here, but the counterbalancing, uh, let's see where we are in, the, in our swing here. So on the uh, trail toll here, I've got now 77% of my weight on my uh, trail toll and 23% on my trail heel. So, you know, Mr. Lee, uh, or David, he, uh, this counterbalancing drill here that he gave me, and, uh, you know, Jim gave me this too, was to, uh, you know, hit the one-arm drill so that I would get more weight to my, uh, more weight balanced. And as you can see here, with my two hands, and I'm going to use a uh, uh, orange-colored line here, or arrow, rather, my... Uh, the numbers here, we got 77% of my weight on my trail toe at exactly peak velocity. So I'm comparing apples to apples. On the right hand side, I've only got 56% of my weight on the uh, um, 
pill toe, and I've got more weight on my heel. Because otherwise, I'm not going to be able to make impact. And I'm counterbalancing better on my trail side. Although, with, with just one arm, I'm not able to get my weight over to my uh, lead side fast enough. I've only got 31% of my weight on my lead side and 42 on my on the left-hand side. You can see 42. So there's some really interesting um, dynamics being formed here. Um, and, you know, you as golf pros and will be able to uh, help us all understand how peak velocity, one of the curves, um, what should be your ideal pressure on your lead side. And I've been doing this now for quite some time, and we're seeing in the touring pros that at peak velocity, that club's ideally going to be your arm, or will, your lead arm will be almost piled out of the ground. And you'll have 50 to 60 percent of your weight already of your pressure onto the lead side. So uh, this gets into the um, uh, what Jim and Dave were talking about, which is counterbalancing or counteracting that pressure that's going. It's now being thrown forward by the mass of your arms. Uh, I hope you have this. I hope you can find some value in this. And I'm just trying to show you how we can use pressure mapping to now begin to uh, educate uh, golfers on a lesson basis. But uh, I'm really finding this counterbalancing extremely interesting because I'm going to clear all the lines. And, you know, it, I, again, you know, I've played tour, I've played high-level college, high-level amateur golf all my life. And, you know, now I'm fat and old and not any good, but um, I don't care what you tell me at impact. Um when that ball makes impact, I, I'm betting on the the right hand side here. Uh, this this line, if you will, is just um, well, it's straight. And to me, that looks like the proper way, the way the best players in the world are at a, at impact, as opposed to uh, this line, which um, and even though I hit that ball fairly well. Isn't this good? That simple, counterbalancing using pressure mapping to uh, understand uh, how it works out. Terry Hashimoto, Bar Track, thanks.